this is the first chapter in which we're going to be talking about Lambda functions. This is a new feature in Java which was added in Java 8. We'll start the chapter by understanding what is meant by the term functional programming and we'll also understand how this kind of functionality was achievable in Java before the introduction of lambdas. We'll then look at what lambdas are and we'll understand the syntax that lambda expressions use. We'll then be able to apply this knowledge to improve the pre-lambda Java code. So let's start by understanding why lambda expressions were added to Java. Lambda expressions were introduced in Java 8 as an attempt to bring some of the benefits of functional programming to Java. Before we look at what functional programming is, let's review first the more standard Java programming model. In Java, we tend to think of our code as being based on the concept of everything being an object. Every piece of code that we write in Java is written with a class and at runtime, instances of these classes are created called objects. Java has a number of built-in classes such as string, integer and ArrayList and we create our own classes to represent objects that we need in our applications such as a customer class or a book class. So in general, a class in Java is a structure which combines data and functionality. That is, it contains variables and methods. Each instance of an object has an identity, a way of referring to that particular instance. This identity might be the name of a variable or a position within a collection. And we can have more than one instance of a class and each instance will share the same functionality but will have potentially different data. It will also have its own identity. One of the implications of this everything is an object model is that if we want to write a method which takes parameters, at runtime, the parameters must be supplied with instances of objects. So I can, for example, define a method called print to console, and that could take a string and print the string to the console. When the method runs, it expects an instance of the string object to be passed to it. There is a limitation here which may not be obvious, and that is that you can't pass functionality into a method, only instantiated objects. I can write a method to take an instance of a class, but I can't pass a block of code as a parameter into a method to be executed within it. Functional programming does allow this to happen. It would allow us to create a method which has a parameter into which we can pass a block of executable code. In a true functional programming language, the concept of a piece of functionality becomes one of the key building blocks for that language. By adding